Mercedes Textiles Limited is a world leader in the innovation and the manufacture of fire hose, fire pumps, and associated fireline accessories. This instructional video demonstrates the various steps in properly setting up and operating our WIC 84H ultra lightweight, all position, high pressure fire pump. So now let's get started with understanding some of the basics of proper setup and starting the pump. Since this is a four stroke engine, the gas and oil are not mixed. Therefore, we need to ensure there is sufficient oil. The oil cap contains a dipstick for measure and we can also tilt the pump to visually inspect the oil level. It uses regular 10W30 oil. Next, if we are running from the internal fuel tank, we need to ensure sufficient fuel. This fuel reservoir is a wraparound and to add the maximum amount of fuel, it may be necessary to tilt the engine slightly to remove any airlock, thus allowing more fuel to be added. This pump uses regular unleaded gasoline. The WIC 84H has an optional remote fuel connection. Note that the remote fuel tank should be at level or preferably at a slightly higher elevation than the pump. To set up this connection, we first open the air valve on the fuel tank. The remote fuel line then needs to be primed, and to do this we connect the remote fuel cap. Since we are now using the remote fuel cap, we remove the standard fuel cap and squeeze the priming bulb until a small amount of fuel comes out of the line. We then disconnect the fuel line connection in order to screw the cap tightly in place and can now reconnect the fuel line. To ensure fuel flow to the carburetor, depress the fuel priming bulb until you observe fuel flow and that there are no more air bubbles. Now let's look at setting up the pump for operation. The first step should be selecting a suitable water source. This can be a forest stream, a pond or lake, or even a backyard swimming pool. Important factors to consider include sufficient water supply, depth, and whether or not the bottom contains mud, sand, or small stones that could damage the pump end. Also, ensure the pump is kept away from dry grass or brush. Should you be using a dock or wooden platform, the pump may need to be secured so as not to move due to vibration. The intake connection to the pump consists of a foot valve and suction hose. The foot valve is equipped with a screen to keep out stones and other debris, plus a check valve that will prevent water from draining out of the hose line. They should be inspected to ensure that there is no foreign debris, the O-ring is correctly seated and that the check valve is functioning. It is then connected to the suction hose and since it will be entirely below the surface of the water, this connection only needs to be hand tight. The foot valve must be completely submerged at least 6 inches or 15 centimeters below the surface to avoid a vortex effect that would allow air to enter. In the case of a muddy or sandy bottom, the foot valve must be suspended at least 6 inches or 15 centimeters from the bottom. You can adapt with whatever you have at hand, such as submerging a toolbox, tying the foot valve to a stake, using an empty plastic container to elevate it, or as demonstrated here. The pump end threads should be protected to avoid damage to the pump end, which would result in an expensive repair. Therefore, both the intake and discharge connections should be equipped with a thread protector or an adapter. The connection to the intake must be airtight, and a hose wrench is an important tool to ensure a proper connection. Next, since this is a centrifugal pump, we must prime the pump end with water, and to do this we are using a hand primer. Once the pump end is primed, we connect the discharge hose and the pump setup is now complete. Now it's time to start the pump, so let's take a look at the various steps to get the engine started and pumping water into the hose line. We first turn the on-off switch to on. Set the throttle to the start position, or about a quarter open. For a cold engine start, the choke must be set to the closed or start position. The pump is equipped with a fuel priming bulb. Depress the priming bulb until you observe fuel flow and that the fuel line is air-free. To start the engine, take a firm grip on the recoil, position the dogs, and give a quick pull. Once the engine starts, or when you hear the first ignition fire, set the choke to the open or run position. With the engine now running, set the throttle to the idle position for at least a minute to allow the engine to warm up. After a warm-up period, increase the engine speed, at which point the clutch will engage, and start pumping water. 
When you are ready to shut down the pump, an idle period of at least a minute is important to allow the engine to cool down. After the engine has been allowed to cool down, turn the on-off switch to the off position. When disconnecting the discharge hose, it is important to prevent water from splashing on the hot engine. Therefore, it may be necessary to restrict the back pressure by either clamping the hose with a hose strangler or kinking the hose before disconnecting. Take particular precaution not to touch the hot muffler, which could cause severe burn. To disconnect the suction hose, use the hose wrench to loosen the connection, then carefully unscrew until the suction hose can be removed. Next, pick up the pump from the opposite side of the muffler, then empty the water from the pump by alternately tilting the intake and discharge ends. Finally, empty the water from the suction hose and also ensure any debris is completely removed from the hose and foot valve. To find more information about any of our pumps, go to our website at mercedestextiles.com and click the video tab on the main menu. We have a worldwide network of distributors, and to find the distributor nearest you, click on our website Contact Us box and we'll put you in touch with a qualified dealer or representative.